autophagy drives some potential fat loss. We used to just think that autophagy was only about proteins. It looks like it's a little bit about fat too. So in recent studies, we've started to see that there is something called lipophagy. And we're gonna dive into how this particular kind of autophagy might potentially help us with more fat loss, especially when we're fasting. You've seen me talk about Boo Foods before, but they have leveled it up. Check this out, okay. Completely organic, completely non-GMO, no sugar alcohols, so no erythritol, nothing like that. Just straight up monk fruit, good tasting bars that are totally plant-based. They have keto bars, they have regular protein bars, they have their cookie dough stuff that I really love. If you're doing a low carb, or doing keto diet, anything like that, perfect for that. But they have a broad spectrum of different products and they built their name just surrounding making good, clean bars. So their non-keto bars, their regular protein bars, are still perfect, delicious if you're just trying to get some protein in and you're really wanting that texture of something really thick and creamy. Probably some of the most satiating bars that I've ever had. And if you're doing low carb, their keto bars are some of the best in the business, if not the best in the business too. That same creamy consistency and cookie dough feeling that you would get from their cookie dough jars, but in a bar. So autophagy generally is about proteins. Okay, usually it helps break down and recycle aggregated proteins or it breaks down misfolded proteins. Basically proteins that have become in a very colloquial way dysfunctional, right? Now that is the lion's share of autophagy's work. But when we are fasting, there is some kind of autophagy called lipophagy. Now it doesn't just occur when we're fasting. I'm using this as a clear example because this channel talks a lot about intermittent fasting. Okay, now lipophagy is where you're breaking down in some way or shape or form fatty acids, you're breaking down fats, okay? Now, what's interesting is that this is somewhat of a survival mechanism for energy homeostasis. So we used to think when we fast, this is great, we're getting cellular autophagy, we're recycling organelles of cells, we're going through mitophagy, we're breaking down you know, various muscle cells, whatever. But the fact that it has this effect with lipophagy on fat opens up a whole new dimension. Because we used to think that fats just got broken down by hormone sensitive lipase. Okay, so basically you have fatty acids, three fatty acids bound to a glycerol molecule, and that is a triglyceride. Now, in order for that triglyceride to get broken down, you need hormone sensitive lipase, which is like a pair of scissors that comes in and cuts those fatty acids away from the glycerol backbone so that they become free fatty acids for you to ultimately burn. This definitely happens when you're fasting, but it turns out that autophagy or lipophagy helps the breakdown of these fatty acids become more efficient so that you have even more available fuel. So it helps increase fatty acid oxidation potentially, at least this is what the newer research is starting to suggest. Now in science, we can never say anything is certain and we're starting to see this data coming out in rodents and it probably needs to be flushed out more in humans, but very, very interesting stuff. Now, this is predominantly happening when there is nutrient scarcity. Because think about it, when there's not a lot of nutrition around because you're fasting or in a serious caloric deficit, the body gets kind of scrappy with what's it using as fuel, right? So it does two things. It becomes very efficient by breaking down proteins and organelles of various cells because it says, we don't need that, that's useless. Let's get rid of that, let's break it down, let's recycle it. So it becomes efficient and that helps with energy. But the other thing that we're seeing now is yes, it actually helps with the supply. It makes the supply easier to access. So instead of having large chunks of fat, you have smaller chunks of fat. Let's just put it like that. So the cells can utilize that easier. Now the other thing that people don't realize is that autophagy creates alanine. Alanine is an amino acid. Okay, this is very, very, very important. So one of the primary byproducts is this amino acid alanine. Alanine is a very strong driver for gluconeogenesis, okay? So gluconeogenesis is where we create glucose, which is fuel for our brain, fuel for our red blood cells, fuel for our body. We create that from other substrates in the liver. It happens when we're fasting. Now, it's kind of a feedback slash feed forward effect. So when we have more alanine being shuttled through gluconeogenesis, into gluconeogenesis, Sometimes this spearheads a cycle where it drives more gluconeogenesis. That is a good thing because it is we are creating more demand. 
so the body has to create more supply. The more supply, in this case, is fat. Generally not a lot of muscle breakdown unless you're fasting for a very long period of time or doing crazy things while you're fasted, like breakdancing for 17 hours or something. But the bottom line is that it's not the same fat loss, right? Like fat loss during fasting might be a little bit more accelerated because of this lipophagy effect. Now, playing devil's advocate here, exercise induces autophagy more than fasting. So in essence, exercise might also stimulate lipophagy. The bottom line here is it doesn't mean that one is necessarily 100% better than the other. It just means that we're uncovering another way in which we utilize fat that is totally new compared to what we thought 20 years ago and what has stuck as sort of fact for the last couple of decades. There's a lot more to it than just cleaving off fatty acids and burning them in the cell. So what's the takeaway here? I still think fasting is powerful, even though I've learned so much more about autophagy over the couple of, last couple of years. I think that fasting drives different forms of autophagy since there are multiple different kinds that are non-selective, right? The body can be, or selective and non-selective in that case, the body can select different kinds of autophagy for different things. And I do stand behind the fact that at least I believe fasting induces specific kinds of autophagy that might be a little bit different than other forms. So yeah. My recommendation, fasting 18 hours, maybe two days per week, or a more realistic thing for a lot of people is do what's called a monk fast, a 36 hour fast once every two weeks. I really like this method. A lot of people like to do it where they fast throughout the day Sunday and then don't eat again until Monday morning. So they start their fast Saturday night after they eat and they don't eat through Sunday and they break their fast Monday morning after their workout. I think this is a great strategy that fits in line with a lot of people's lives, doesn't ask you to change your diet a whole lot. Just do that once every two weeks or if you're getting really froggy, do it every one week. See you tomorrow.